Als je van, je van jezelf gewoon niet meer weet wat je met je geld moet. Je gewoon denkt, ik kan alles kopen. Dan kan je natuurlijk allerlei mooie kaartjes kopen. Nou, als je dan van Engels spullen houdt, dan denk je meteen misschien aan Bentley. En uh, daar zit ik nu ook in. Niet geheel toevallig. Maak er een volledige video over, kunnen jullie binnenkort gaan kijken. Maar ik kan natuurlijk ook voor iets heel anders gaan. Ander karakter, veel sportiever. Bijvoorbeeld McLaren 27S. En we zijn vlak bij Laumann. En uh, die hebben ons uitgenodigd om eens eventjes een rondje te komen sturen. Samen met iemand die ook daadwerkelijk weet waar het over gaat. Een van de mensen die als testrijder uh, de auto mee ontwikkeld heeft. Dus uh, nou, we zijn er. Er staan hier nog een hoop Maserati's. Maar als het goed is, staat er ook een heel rijtje met lekkers. Kijk. Spulletjes hoor. Keuzestress. Welke kleur moeten we nou nemen? Ik vind het moeilijk. Ik denk dat ik die achterste het gaafst vind. Dat uh, hele felle blauw. Maar uh, nou, we zien het wel. Maakt ook niet zo heel veel uit hè, de kleur als je erin zit. We zitten in de 27S en jullie zien het, ik zit aan de andere kant. En dat is omdat ik, ik heb net al een stukje gereden, dat is hartstikke tof. Daar hebben we ook een videootje van gemaakt. En Martijn heeft ook een mening en die zie je ook nog eventjes. Maar... Deze meneer werkt voor McLaren, is pro-driver. Zijn naam is Rob Garofal. Yes. Yeah. Um, dus we gaan even overschakelen naar Engels nu, maar dat lukt jullie wel. McLaren 720S. Yep. Great car. Um, I got to drive it for an hour, which was fun. Excellent. Uh, you get to drive it on a daily basis as much as your boss asks yeah, yes, you to, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. So what's your, what's your job title? Well, uh, I'm part of the pro driver team for McLaren, so uh, it's a pretty varied role. Uh, it just depends on what's required, uh, so anything from events like this and introducing our cars to, to new people, uh, to heading out to uh, making some of the films for when we launch some of the cars, and uh, yeah, you know, possibly sometimes getting involved with the development team if, uh, if they're stretched to their limits. Okay, um, so customer events is, is, is you, you travel around Europe? We, we travel pretty much around the world now, around so world, okay. uh, we've been out recently to Australia, New yeah. Zealand, um, uh, out to Asia, so um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty global now, McLaren, uh, I'm very lucky, I've been with the McLaren for about eight years from the 12C all the way through, so we, uh, we, we travel an awful lot and our dealer network is getting bigger and bigger and the events uh, are getting bigger and bigger so it's uh, yeah it's becoming pretty busy your wife and kids still recognize you or just about just about just about but I think if I spent more time at home then maybe our relationship wouldn't be so good so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, I mean I, I travel a lot for my work as well but but I can imagine you're going like half of the time or something. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's pretty full on, especially through the summer. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we still get our, our time at home. Yeah, still see the little ones. You told me um, uh, you also do the filming for like the, the commercials you guys bring out when a new model comes out, the, yes. the promotional videos. Yeah. Um, you showed me some footage. Uh, I'm gonna ask the editor to put it over <laughs> this because um, that's impressive, but I mean, That's like the dream job. Everybody wants that oh, job, for right? Sure. I mean, you know, when you when you're asked to go and take a new model that no one's seen yet before and uh, get involved with the film crew and make some of these amazing films that, that come out. I mean, obviously the driver is anonymous. It's all about the car, but the experience of uh, driving the cars absolutely on the limits or making a little bit of smoke and having some fun. It's, uh, it's a very privileged position and, and it's, uh, uh, it's hugely fun to do. And it really, you know, really gets to show the cars off um, uh, as well. So yeah. you showed me the footage of the 600 LT. Yes. And yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I knew that video once you showed it to me, I was like, oh yeah, I've seen it when the car came out yeah. or when it was introduced. But, but now knowing that it was you behind the wheel of all those <laughs> like fourth gear power slides, <laughs> crazy stuff. 
Oh yeah. man, that's amazing. Yeah. It, I mean, for that kind of a job, you're you're out there for like what, a day or a week or well, that that particular uh, shoot. We went out a week ahead. It was out in California. Yeah. yeah. So we have a team that go out and scout the locations. We then went out to had a look around the sites to establish what we think we can do uh, with the, with the film crew. Uh, then we went back about a week later. That's when the car got shipped to California. At that point, it's all very secret. So the car has to be transported in a crate and undercover transportation. Uh, we undercover transportation. Yeah, so all of the time the car is uh, is is hidden away because we can't risk. Do you put it in the grocery uh, truck or something. Or? Uh, something you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, just a uh, just a, a standard covered transporter, yeah. but um, but keeping it a secret. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then we went to the mine first of all, and we shot the first part of the uh, the video, yeah. which was about two days. Then we shot the second part of the video at the racetrack, which was again, I think about two, two and a half days in total, so pretty intense um, uh, time period to come up with, uh, with film. Those kind of filming days are, I guess, pretty stressful also on the material. I mean, how many tires did you go through? Oh, there was a few tires that we, we uh, worked our way through over the few days. <laughs> they actually told me, like, the, the one tire, did you, did, like the, the big power slide at the end of the video? Uh, we, we may have may have used that tire to its limits yeah. on, uh, on one of the runs through, <laughs> yes, possibly. Cool. Oh, man. Yeah. That's a dream job. How do I... If I want that job, how do I get there? How did you start out? Well, you know what? This It all comes back to motor racing, really. I started karting as a kid and raced uh, uh, through various different ranks, uh, culminating in uh, sports car racing, uh, prototypes in the LMP2 and LMP3 category in the European Le Mans series. Yeah. Uh, and when you're working and racing in those environments, you, you get to to know a lot of people within the industry and it's a natural progression to take those skills into uh, working for a, for a car manufacturer. Is that actually like, in the Netherlands, I, I, I didn't know any kids who grew up doing karting or stuff like that, is it? I think the, the British are way more into motorsports than a lot of other... Um, I, th I think it's becoming more global. Uh, <laughs> certainly the UK is a hub for motorsport and a lot of history and a lot of heritage in the UK for motorsport and for, for sports cars. Um, but um, one of my teammates last year in the European Le Mans series was Job uh, Van Utert, yeah, who yeah. Uh, is an absolutely incredible driver from the Netherlands. And he's, uh, we won the European Le Mans series last year in LMP3 category and he's moved on this year. He's racing with G-Drive in LMP2 and they're, they're having great success. So, you know, a, a fantastic driver out of the Netherlands for sure. Right, so basically if you want to get to your position, you have to start out racing, get well, a lot of experience. Yeah, pretty much most of our, uh, all of our pro driver team, including our test and development drivers, our senior test driver is Kenny Brack, who is a winner of the Indy 500. Yeah. Um, our second in charge on the test and development is Gareth Howell, who is an ex-British touring car racing driver. And all of our in-house pro driver team have uh, very high level CVs in international motorsport. Those, those skills and that feeling yeah. um, really help when you're developing sports cars particularly and uh, that experience. I, I guess the, like the, the, the professional racing aspect to it is that you have a very fine feeling for what a car does and then the, the little adjustments that are needed to build a professional car. Yeah. Uh, or a professional car, to build a, a, a sports car that you can put out to the people and, and everybody doesn't get killed on their first ride in it. Um, <laughs> what, what's the kind of things you're, you're included in when you... When you, when you well, uh, for me, not particularly too much on the, on the, the test and development side. As I say, we've got an in-house team that, uh, that deal with that, but we'll be brought in perhaps towards the end of a program if they need some durability driving done to test parts, to put mileage on parts, to, to see how the car will, will cope over a long period of time or being used uh, to an extreme level. We, you know, we want cars to go out there that have been fully tried and tested. Yeah. So, not so much uh, input on the on the actual development of the cars, but quite a little bit of help with, as I say, with, with durability particularly. And I guess you, you guys, because you do so much customer events, you know a lot about what the customer actually 
wants and wants to experience in the car. Yeah, absolutely. We, we work uh, very hard with our customers on track events as well, helping them develop their skills in their McLarens. Tuning, you, 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 you can put in some customer um, input if you, if you want. To. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we do. We have what we call our pure McLaren uh, track events, which we hold uh, all around again, all around the world now. Uh, we have a lot of our owners come to these events, whether it's driving our cars or driving their cars or getting involved with our GT cars, uh, the GT4 car, for example. So we can take a customer from a road car right the way through to their racing license and, and try and you know, pass over some of our skills to them and help them develop their enjoyment of their cars. But uh, and as I say, also that, that possibility to get on the path as a, as a racing driver. Cool. I guess you've driven all the cars in the lineup, right? Pretty much, not not the the new speed tail that's that's coming out shortly, but, yeah. but everything else in the lineup. Yeah. What's your favorite? I mean, you got to. Oh wow! Well. Well. Um, I would say it's difficult because you have a big a big price variance between say the ultimate series and the uh, yeah and the. Uh, the if money series. wasn't there, wasn't the thing. Ah uh, wow! Well, okay, I think I think the 600 LT. Okay. It's it's just such a, a fun car to drive. It puts a smile on your face. It's a usable everyday car, and uh, and, it, and, and flames come out of it. So it's fair <laughs> enough. And this does exactly the same with a bit more power. Just you don't see the flames. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just for the flames, you would go for the 600 LT. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> so this car, I mean, uh, uh, recently one of the um, uh, salesmen at Lauman, he, he explained to me like every car now gets through a series and then in the end you will get an LT and then the next series, series yeah, comes out. Yeah, yeah. So there will be a 7 whatever LT in the end of, uh, of, of this car. Um, if that gets the exhausts out of the... No, no, no but I, I'm, I'm not trying to let you say, <laughs> no, no. But if it gets the exhaust out of, out of the top so you can see the flames, that, would you then pick the... LT version of this car over the 600 or? Oh man, I mean, I, it, I've, I've, it, until you've driven something or been involved with something, it's so hard to say, but uh, looking at the history of McLaren cars, the 675 LT was just a stunning car to drive and it still is so much fun, so engaging. The 600 LT uh, has got that same feeling, so for sure the LT variants of, of the cars, so they, they you know, take, take things to the extreme and really put a smile on your face. It's, it's incredible how much um, how much difference there is between the cars and, and when I hadn't driven a McLaren yet, I, I didn't understand all the models, you know, yes. it was to me it was all like twin turbo V8, yep. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. carbon monocoque, two seater, all the cars were the same for me, you know, and, and just looking from the outside. And now I've experienced a few. It's incredible how much difference you can still get in a car while the ingredients, the basic ingredients are the same, right? It's, it's well, as, as you said, they are very, very different cars in, in feel and performance. And we put our cars into three categories. So the sport series, which yeah. is essentially the 570 models, range the uh, super series which is the 720 variants and then ultimate series which would be p1 uh, and Senna at the moment so very different um, characteristics and performance and feel of, of the cars in those three yeah. different sectors and so then within those three sectors then you have your different model variants so the spider for example the coupe or the GT yeah. so uh, when you uh, understand the the, the way the cars work, it makes complete sense, and you've driven now the different models in the different series yeah. of cars and yeah. experienced that they are very different cars yeah. for sure. Yeah. 
very cool cars. Man, I envy you. <laughs> Just get to drive this every day. Oh, every listen, day. It's, it's, it's not lost on anyone, I think, that works for McLaren. We're, we're huge and privileged to do what we do. And, you know, we, we love what we do. It's, it's you a can't, passion. You can't come home and say to your wife, like, oh, man, this was a hard day. This was a, She'll be like, I'm dude. Shocked, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She'll be like, dude, you, you got to drive for McLaren today. What are you moaning about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. No, we, as I say, we are extremely lucky and uh, and it's it's not not something at all that that is lost on us um, uh, but again you know you, you've sat in the cars now you feel that uh, the cars are having extreme performance at the the, the end of the, the track mode settings but at the same time you put it back into comfort into automatic and it's just a comfy yeah. easy everyday car to drive it's crazy it's crazy and it's very hard to tell that to the people like, like how big the difference is between the track mode and the sport mode and the car yeah. mode and how usable this car is yeah absolutely on the drive we've had this morning uh, you see on the route we have a bit of motorway yeah. uh, we have some small country roads some small yeah. roads through the towns and some speed bumps yeah and the car can just cope with everything as, a, with as a usual everyday car and yeah. The owner of this McLaren 12C here told me he can get a crate of beer in the front. In front. Which is really important. Which is really I important. Yeah. Yeah. People oversee it. Yeah. yeah. He's done He's done 100,000 kilometers yeah. in that car now. Yeah, he told me he almost daily drives it. He, yeah. uh, sometimes he has to use his big fan for it. Yeah, but if he needs more beer. But a daily driven <laughs> supercar, guys. It's possible. Thank you so much for um, talking to us. And, You're very uh, welcome. Um, giving us a little bit of an insight in the daily job of a McLaren Pro Driver. Yeah, as I say, we're very fortunate to do what we do and we love every minute of it. It's great chatting to you too. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers.